Northern Nautical Society. Eight, nine, ten... Oh, hi there. Have you noticed how the sky is a pretty busy place? It's estimated that there's over 20,000 planes flying around at any one time. So you don't normally have to watch for long before you'll see a plane overhead. But there's also much more going on up there than you might realise. Most large aircraft you can see aren't travelling much higher than about 35,000 feet. That's about 10 kilometres. But there's plenty of other objects flying around thousands of kilometres above the Earth. They're called satellites. A satellite is an object that orbits another object. Our moon is a satellite and the Earth itself is a satellite of the Sun. And then there's the artificial satellites that we've placed in orbit around the Earth. It's estimated that there are over 3,600 artificial satellites in orbit, of which around 1,000 are operational. The rest are just floating around, having done their work. Approximately 500 of these operational satellites are in low Earth orbit. That means they are up to 2,000 kilometres above the Earth. 50 are in medium Earth orbit, around 20,000 kilometres away, while the rest are in geostationary orbit, around 36,000 kilometres. The very first artificial satellite was called Sputnik 1 and was sent into space in 1957 by the former Soviet Union. Now, you might think that it's just the Americans and Russians that launch satellites. Well, you'd be wrong. In 1962, the UK worked with the Americans to launch the first international satellite. This was called Ariel 1 and it carried six British instruments to investigate the space environment. And in 1967, we built our first very own 100% British satellite called Ariel 3. Today, the UK has a reputation as one of the world's leading manufacturers of satellites for science, communications and navigation. Each satellite carries a unique set of instruments or technology relevant to the mission. A communication satellite will need large antennas to receive and transmit television and telephone signals to Earth, while a disaster monitoring satellite will have cameras to take photographs of the land below. To work properly, most satellites need to stay in the same orbit. This is achieved through a combination of speed and the gravitational pull between the Earth and the satellite. You can simulate this gravitational pull by swinging a ball tied to a piece of string in a circle above your head. If the string breaks, the ball would fly off in a straight line. But because it's tied to the string, the ball safely orbits your head, just like the gravity on a satellite. In addition to providing satellite TV and operating your parents' sat-nav, satellites do a variety of really useful jobs. Here's some clues to some of the jobs they do. Communication satellites, like the British Hylas and Hotbird satellites, are responsible for delivering radio, phone and broadband signals to our homes, in addition to high-definition TV. Then there's satellites like the Hubble Space Telescope and the International Space Station that undertake scientific experiments and observe the universe using powerful telescopes to make new discoveries about stars and planets. Both of these contain lots of scientific equipment that was made in the UK. Other satellites observe what's going on around the Earth. A satellite called GOCE is monitoring the movement of the oceans while well, Cryosat 2 is watching the ice caps. Natural disasters such as typhoons, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions can cause major devastation. A group of satellites called the DMC help provide pictures of what's happening so relief teams can get help to where it's needed the most. There's just time to check out a very cool new type of satellite. They're called CubeSats. The clues in the name. CubeSats are, well, small cube-shaped satellites. The best thing about them is that because they're so small and light, many can share launchers to get them up into orbit. It's a bit like sharing a lift. And being cheap is very
very important because the idea is to get students and companies involved in trying out experiments in space. Not just scientists with pots of money. In just one cube launched in 2013, there's a device to measure space weather, a camera to take images of the Earth, and an experiment using cosmic radiation. All in just one satellite smaller than a football. I wonder if you could think of a cool experiment for a CubeSat to do. The sky's the limit. Amy's Aviation, with support from the Royal Aeronautical Society. Find out more about aviation at funkinslive.com forward slash aviation.